inspiration for this is one of the one of the inspirations aside from the fact that when I joined the movement I, I would hitchhike 60 miles in from the countryside where my father's farm was to Washington DC and um, just to join up with their you know, Nagar Kirtan party in the city. And then I would I would go along with him, you know, chanting, playing my flute, and uh, follow them back to the temple. And then they would have prasad there, breakfast prasad. They would go out for an hour in the morning, right after Bhagavatam class. They would give Mataji's, a couple of Mataji's were cooking the breakfast in the kitchen, time to prepare the breakfast offering. And then, so we would go out, say like between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock, when people started coming into the city to their work. We would go down to the main business district. Some of this may be superfluous, I don't know. But, um, but the, uh, because we, we would go out for an hour, walk from the temple down to the main business district, because at that time our temple was on Q Street, which was in the, you know, a very, uh, kind of hip part of the temple, part of the city above Georgetown, DuPont Circle area, which was a very hip area. And, uh, but we would walk from the temple down to K Street Mall, which was uh, the main business, business di district of Washington. And, uh, and then walk back up to the temple so we would do an hour's kirtan down the streets, just uh, uh, before breakfast was on. Then we would take breakfast, and then by 10 o'clock, we were out on the streets again. And uh, usually we would go to Georgetown, sometimes down to the Smithsonian Mall in between the Washington Monument and the Capitol Building and we do Kirtan there. There would be like, you know, 19 of us or so. These 15. Where there were about 20 devotees in the temple at that time. One devotee would stay back. One or two devotees would stay back. The rest of us would go out. And we would go out and shave his head with uh, Dilak and 
special clothes. So that was our program from 10 o'clock till around, say, 10, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. We'd go out for like at least 12, 14 hours in a day. So when I joined the movement, you know, kirtan was what it was all about, performing Harinam Sun Kirtan and distributing books and passing out feast invitation cards side by side with the Harinam Sun Kirtan party. You know, and it was great. It was, it was very inspirational. I experienced the, uh, you know, a practical demonstration of the life of all the transcendental knowledge in the books. When Srila Prabhupada came to Washington in 1976, uh, he, we would go out on the morning walk and then Prabhupada would come back to his quarters. This was in Potomac, Maryland. That was after we'd moved out of the city, Potomac, small farm, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it, country estate, semi-country estate. So one morning, somehow or other, there were other devotees there. Vipina Purandara was there, and I, f I forget the others who were there. And they were like, you know, mostly the, the kirtan, you know, the main kirtan he has in the temple at that time. But uh, somehow or other, a badanga was pushed into my hand and I was told to lead the kirtan. It seemed like maybe there was nobody else to do it or something. But, uh, so I had the badanga in my hands and I was playing in my simple way the best I could, which was more like the way Akinshina Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj would play the Madanga in a more simple kind of way, but effective way. And and I was walking alongside Srila Prabhupada, probably around a foot and a half away from him, right by his side, chanting Hare Krishna very happily, chanting Hare Krishna, very happy to be chanting Hare Krishna and performing kirtan, you know, with Srila Prabhupada, you know, right there with me, you know, and 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 uh, as as we're walking along, Srila Prabhupada turns to me, he kind of like lifts his head in his typical regal Srila Prabhupada way, and you know, looks kind of like down at me, even though, because he was lifting his head because I was a little taller than him. Srila Prabhupada was surprisingly short. When I first saw Srila Prabhupada, I was shocked. So, you know, he kind of lifted his head up and was kind of, it was almost as if he was looking down his nose, you know, at me, looking up at me. But at the same time, he was, you know, kind of like tilting his head in that kind of Bengali Indian fashion and um, and he, he says to me uh, with a very uh, positive glance of approval um, he says to me the only word that he ever said to me directly one word while I'm leading the kirtan he says, Jai. So, and that's the only word he said to me in, in my whole life, Krishna conscious life. But that one word carried a lot of potency with it, carried a lot of 
was a inspiration. This is this is where Einjordas starts redirecting his energies toward Harinam Sankirtan, and that's what I started doing, going out every day for no less than eight hours a day, rain or shine, with or without anybody. I didn't care if someone was willing to you know to come and help, then then go to Hallelujah. And, and if and if they weren't willing to come and help, you know, then go hallelujah. Hari Hari Bo. And there were many days when devotees, many devotees would come out to help, and many days when next to nobody would come out to help. But I would be out there every day for eight to ten hours daily, you know, minimum. Then you know, for you know for I would I did that in, in in Chicago and then we would go to certain malls and areas. But then I started doing it full full steam ahead in New York from about 1981 till till 1986 when I decided to pack up my marbles and come to Vrindavan and start the 24-hour kirtan because there was no 24-hour kirtan. In the temple, one of the two temples that Prabhupada uh, instructed that there must be 24 hour cure. I'm very grateful to all of you for helping. And I, and I pray that Radharani and Krishna and Lord Chaitanya, my Sachi Sutta, will recognize you for helping me. Whatever little encouragement, whatever little assistance, you know. But real helping means chanting as loud as possible in the kirtans. Not just sitting there looking pretty. <laughs> you have to chant loudly. And really cry out to Radharani and Krishna. In the mood of Helping each other cry out for Radharani and Krishna. That's para upakara. And that's Brajbasi. Without para upakara, there's no Brajbasi. Brajbasi means para upakara, para dukaduki. Dukha.